Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. In the days of yore, when critical events that shape culture or cause, like the Lekki Togate shooting, the people will often not call a priest, lawyers, or journalists for the reason that preserving the experience in oral tradition was sacrosanct. The people will ask the town crier to go call a poet, or a psalmist if you like, to recount the experience, capture its essence and significance in the stratosphere, then evoke the mercies of the God of creation. And so my advocacy today came to me in that manner as a poem, whilst I was meditating at rabbis. So I say, call me a poet. Call me a poet when the cock crows. One who will scribble these stories in the parchment of remembrance from the edge of our country homes and the pastures of our living experiences. How our feet were soaked in the blood of our souls and we crawl on the rough road with bullets sprinkled on our tires. Call me a poet who knows how we came down as a generation whose bloodline linger on the echoes of anguish, leaving footsteps of blood on the fallen threshold, killed by day, robbed by night, and jailed at forenoon. Call me a poet. Sass, mean, fierce, blood. When they took our lives like it is theirs, our blood like their wines, we will to the high heaven, stain in the sins of the state, the transgression of the sovereign, and the genocide of a country ungoverned. On this space, we call up the future, walking on the sinister trademark of state forces. Call me a poet. To reach out to our dofietua. Today is our day of recompense. From these graves of our confidence, we march into the reckless souls, drowning you in the evil of your tempest, camping around the shadows of our grievances to pour out our pains to the death throne of your iniquities, where you drag us to the dangling portion of your greed. Call me a poet to take back our cowries from the lucky toll gate of blood, where our struggle was stolen by the sovereign, whose unknown soldiers cracked up our fortitude, leaving our resolve stronger. Call me a poet to take these lessons before I go to Rabbi to bring back the Ark of Prescience, Nansu is propelled to roast the inordinate charlatans who delude the prognosis of our regressive allegiance and will our sacred entrails to the sand of hate. Call me a poet. I shall go to Rabbi again. <laughs> oh, wow. Call me a poet. Call me a poet. <laughs> Call me a you poet. shall go Call to the president. <laughs> Call me a poet. Now you, now you will go say. <laughs> Listen to me now. Call me a poet who shall take this message to the president that the land needs cleansing. Yes. And that the leaders need to atone for the sins they have committed against mankind. Call me a poet. Call me a poet. <laughs> I, th I think I it's, it. it's, it's quite a... I love it. The, the, the message is clear for anybody who, who appreciate uh, uh, poetry. The, the, the confessions, do I call it confessions? Those people who have been approaching the committee, Lagos State Committee, no matter what um, anybody have against that committee, 
when you listen to the stories that are coming forth on that pedestal, um, it, it, they are moving. They, they take you to tears. Those are not stories that should be buried uh, under any circumstances. They must be brought to the fore for us to appreciate that people were actually being thrown from second floor of, of, yes. of a building. The Alaba, of it, 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 well, it's well, reprehensible. Well, not that, and the people not that I have, their teeth. Yeah. Not that I have and anything pregnancies. against um, you know, uh, such panel. Um, first and foremost, the question is, yeah, by the way, I, I like this message. We need to take, you know, uh, look for a messenger. The poet is like the messenger who will take this message to where it should be. But on the issue of the inquiry, we are used to storytelling. And they won't go anywhere Jamboree. at the end of the day. Who is the poet that will take the message to the temple of justice? Evans, that the people, <laughs> that the people are crying and desires justice. Yeah. Where is the point? And so you find out that after we all have listened to all of these stories, you know, in tears. The, the, the governor should and, take it there. In tears. And then what happens when a smart man takes a lawyer and says, look, by provisions of section one, subsection one of the uh, Lagos State um, Tribunal of Inquiry laws, mm. that yeah, the no governor way. has no power to set up an inquiry to try or to look into affairs that federal concerns agency. police brutality or a federal agency. And so, by so doing, my Lord, I hereby urge and pray this court to declare and pronounce that every act, action, pronouncement made by the tribunal against me be so declared null and void. And, and of no legal consequence, consequence whatsoever. You see, you and see. when it happens, <laughs> and when it happens, all the efforts would have, would have come to naught. The, there is no national human rights in the world today that is as powerful as the National Human Rights Commission, commission. in Nigeria. Yeah. The powers of that commission are so broad in section six of the and it covers every, every imaginable offense against human rights that you can think of. Why, if we truly want to give justice, why are we not looking in that direction? Precisely the point. Well, you that recall that when we started talking about the, the, the need for people to, you know, for healing and people to be able to say what they've gone through, we asked for the Human Rights Commission, not judicial panels by state governments. We, they know already that the, the, the powers of these judici judicial panels will be limited. At the so end of the day, it's just a jam it's going to be a jamboree. What in Abuja? So what is happening to the Human Rights Commission? Why are they not stepping up? Why is in, in, the federal government not allowing them in, to do the need for? In Abuja, Section Six of the National Human Rights Commission Act was invoked, and then the National Human Rights Commission is looking into police brutality and everything that has to do with human rights abuse okay. that occurred in the last. Uh, few Why years. don't we have that commission centralized to take care of everyone in Nigeria? They state offices. That is what it's supposed to be. By that the law. is and what they we're have asking state offices. for this program they now have with offices. this. So I mean, we we should uh, look into that. Uh, Aisha is. Uh, well, yes. uh, well, well, the thing is that that's part of the things that the NSAS protesters have been talking about. Right now, the National Human Rights Commission does not have a governing council. Yes, and I without mean. a governing council constituted, do they have the, uh, the chairman, is it executive chairman, does he have the right uh, to constitute this panel? And yeah. they've, con they've constantly talked about the fact that uh, these state judicial, uh, judiciary panels are being set up, they're just like a jamboree. But you know something? You know, you said I'm a poet. But most of that, let me just say something. In this country, sadly, we look the other way when people are being attacked. We do not have empathy. We forget that when they attacked Shiites in December 2015, that it was human beings like us that were being killed. Some people didn't like them, and then they clapped for the military. When military attacked IPOB, some people don't like IPOB, and they clapped for military. They forget that, indeed, IPOBs are just like us. And one thing is for sure, as long as we continue to look the other way, when some of us are being killed, this will continue to happen. We will embolden the security agents, most especially the military, to be on the street and keep killing people. Oyibo is bleeding right now in Potakot, in, in, in River State. 
What are we doing as citizens? Many people are looking the other way because they would rather call them IPOC than to call them human. Until we understand that we are all humans and every one of us, we are connected. And what happens to another affects us and we speak out. This will continue to happen, mm, sadly. Mm. This will continue to it happen. It will. Unfortunately, most of these things will continue to happen if we don't do something about it. I'll talk about also and IPPIS after the break.